Professor at, in Aerospace Science Engineering at Tuskegee University. He received a bachelor's and master's degree in, spa in spacecraft design engineering from, B from Beihang University from Beihang University and his PhD degree in, in the mechanical and aerospace uh, engineering department at the Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio. His research in interests include optimal control, numeral, numerical, and optimization and, and anonymous systems. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Wan. It's nice to meet you, Aaron Wan. It's good to see you here and uh, as introduced, uh, my research focuses on the auto control problems. Today, I, the topic we will focus on the few optimal guidance for the planetary engine, how descent and landing problem, which could be formulated, and a very general optimal control problem. And here is the outlines for the for this presentation. First, I've introduced the motivation for this problem and the problem formulation to a mathematical model. And I've introduced the method we proposed to solve the resulting problem. And uh, I've introduced the two math methodology to improve the, the calculation computational efficiency. And then you will present the future work. Uh, as we know, a human Mars mission or planet missions require we divide the of the payload from the engine interface of the atmosphere with a where at hypersonic speed to a per fly design date surface location at near zero speed with pinpoint accuracy or precision. This is design date landing with 100 meters of the location. It's unlike the past robotic landing missions, the human mission, the predict mass of a human scale engine vehicle will be increased at least an order of magnitude. For example, the engine vehicles in the Mars scientist laboratory mission weighs only 2,400 kilograms. However, for, it, for future human land missions, the uh, engine vehicle will be weighs over 50 tons. This estimated value. So we can see it's a big change, a big increase in weight. As a result, engine vehicle have to fly with higher lift jack ratio or then the, the power descent descent we have replaced parachute in the land, in the robotic landing missions. That means we only have the engine phase and power descent phase. The engine have to generate generating a ritual thrust to add a subsonic speed to decelerate the human human scale lander that we, which will cost few, a large amount of fuel. Therefore, it should become a very challenging task to achieve the high precision landing while minimizing the fuel consumption due to, during the uh, entire engine power descent phases. Uh, there is, this topic is not a new one. It, there exist many formulations, but previously existing literature or, or research generally focus on generating guidance quant separately for the engine phase or for the power descent phase. Few efforts on optimizing, optimizing the engine phase guidance or for that lead to ideal indication conditions for power descent phase or power descent operation. This is a combination it together. But actually the control of, of the aerodynamic forces will improve the deceleration capability of the engine vehicle, which benefits the fuel saving during the forwarded power descent phase. That we are trying to do is essentially high demanded to de develop the guidance approach that optimized end to end from the initial position to the terminal landing position, engine power descent and landing trajectories towards fuel optimal and precise landing. Therefore, in our our research focus on the aspect, the following aspect. First, in the problem formulation, we have have two published papers. One is considered the end-to-end, -end, the EDL problem with fuel fuel optimal guidance. Second, we consider the six degree of freedom atmosphere entering trajectory optimization. They will be benefits the precise control for the engine vehicle. Excuse me. And 
Meanwhile, we also uh, consider the numerical of transition method to solve the resulting of to the form rate problem. Uh, it's typically, now, uh, there exists multiple methods to handle the output control problem, such as the direct method, which an indirect method. And in the, typically, in the indirect method, we use the, the print, uh, optimal control series to transfer it, the optimal control problem to two point boundary value problems. But this typically is uh, very sensitive to the initial gas of the uh, length and the multipliers. In, in our work, if we will focus on the direct method, which we transfer the continuous time of the control problem to a nonlinear programming. Also, we will combine it with uh, nowadays the um, machine learning method in, uh, in solving or in, in solving the problems to improve their efficiency. This is a framework of our algorithm development. First, we formulate the optimal guidance problem or few optimal guidance problem and optimal control problem, optimal control formation, and use the polynomial approximation to transfer some non-polynomial terms into into polynomials. So we we have tenure polynomial of the control problem through the discretization and the uh, we will obtain the parameter of transitions. In the end, we could equivalently be equivalently written as the quadratic constraint quadratic programming, which could have a standard formulation in here. And uh, but the formulated QCQB problems could be usually are non convex and large scale, which and that means it's MP hard to solve. So what we are trying to do is we could propose a customized the native direct minimization problems to deal with that, and we used we could utilize the, the linear based method or the, or the domain decomposition method uh, to improve the efficiency. So we can, we come to the second section is about the problem formation, and as we see in the mission scenario, we have two phases. Firstly, engine phase, and the power descent phase, and also we we try to integrate them into end to end for a mass EDL problem. So for for the engine phase, here the dyna uh, dynamic equations used to, in a two, two degree two degree freedom. And we have lead force, jack force. And we also have considered mission constraints, such as the heating load constraints. That means the upper bound for the heat heatings on the on the top on the surface here, and also dynamic pressure constraints, normal load constraints. That's three mission constraints considered. So the orbital control problem for the entrance phase could be considered as this formation here. We, we are trying to minimize the terminal velocity. And subject to the dynamic equations, mission constraints, aerodynamic forces, and boundary conditions that initial and, and uh, terminal conditions. And for the power descent phase, we also have its own dynamic equations. We have the uh, position vector, velocity vector, and the gravity thrust thrust vectors. And then we also have some mission constraints, including the bounded thrust magnitude. That means we have the thrust magnitude have maximum value and minimum value, and bounded mass is, and uh, uh, the glide slope constraints. That means the trajectory have to locate within this slope within this slope to per, to prevent the lander impact with the ground before landing. So we can conclude the optimal guidance for the power descent phase in these formulations. The Objectives is minimize is minimize fuel consumption and subject to dynamic equations or the mission constraints and boundary conditions. And this is separate formulation, but we are trying to formulate it in end to end form that is one integrated problem. We should consider the continuity conditions at the at the engine at the this port adjacent point. So that is the formulation doing here, we should consider the nonlinear, the highly nonlinear and high non-convex problem here. And as we 
introduced before, for this non-convex um, control problem, we first use the polynomial approximation to transfer to polynomial of the control problem. And using the discretization, we could finally formulate it and quadratically constrain quadratically programming. And such as I will give you examples how to transfer that. For example, for the Mars atmosphere density models, which it should be exponential functions on the attitude. What we should do is you approximate it by exp these exponential functions by first by this one to make sure all the values should be uh, positive, and then we should tear cell expansion to fit the fit this curve. It's doing it here. It should be a polynomial functions on the radial distance or the attitude. Do you hear? And we have the real data. It the functions for the uh, L atmosphere density and also the Approximation curl, we can see the work. it quietly approximated it well. <coughs> and for the heat, heat load bound, which is also are non polynomial functions, we do some collaboration, uh, the approximations, you could find out the, the bound in equivalently rewrite the heating load constraints on the velocity, that is the curl thing here. And for the sinusoidal or cosinusoidal, we can also equivalently to transfer to a polynomial functions. Then all functions in this problem are polynomials. And then we are trying to do the discretization to find out all the, to transfer it into a quadratic functions. That's the final formulations for the QCQB for the view of optimal control problem. Next, uh, I will briefly introduce the proposed the, the leading direction of multiplier method method of, of multiplier for the non convex QCQP problems. We typically study from the general formation of QCQB in a quadratic form. I have a quadratic equation, quadratic, quadratic, quadratic equality constraints, and inequality constraints. And, but this, the capital Q, and p vector and uh, the matrix coefficient matrix are not have not to be uh, positive definite. So that means this problem could be non convex So first we will introduce a new vector, namely the y, with that y x equal to y is a, which is a consensus uh, constraints. So we can re equivalently equivalently transfer the problem into this formation here. That means the all the equations will be Linearly dependent on x and dependent on y, so we could use the augment, augmented Lagrange functions. We find out the the Lagrange problems and the corresponding terms for the objective consensus terms, equality constraints and inequality constraints, and we apply the classical ADMM framework to solve this problem, including the primary updates for x y by fixing the x and y in each step and do updates for the for each the Lagrangian multiplier mu new mu and lambda and then we have also have uh, defined the law to update the weighting factor all the det more details could be found in this in this poll in this paper <coughs> and in the, in these formulations for the primary due uh we can find out it should be a, po a convex problem relative to x. So we could use the, the KKT conditions or first order optimality conditions to get the equation doing here. And we will find out a, a synthetical solutions or a synthetical updated law for each primary updates for x and y. So if you look at here, this framework, the ADMM framework, we could have conclusions. All the equations are updated in the a synthetic method or in a closed form, so it will be definitely improve the computational efficiency compared to that other algorithms using some soft uh, commercial solver. Then here is the result for the this the, these figures. The left one represents the velocity and attitude curve. We starting from the initial initial point and in the dropped down and the interface and here this part is the demonstrate the velocity and the attitude 
curves in the power descent phase. Are we compared with the NL, uh, NLP server and uh, com to compare the accuracy or curve? And we here the rise figures represented the mass and uh, the the mass curve the, at the time history of mass. We could say the proposed method could which find out a more uh, optimal a, a better solutions for the curve. For, for this problem. And here is the animation for the Mars EDL problem. First in the ancient phase. This video is accelerated by 10, 12 tons. And then it goes slowly going to the and then go to the party center phase. We can see the attitude change. And this is the comb represents the thrust generated by the vehicle. And however, although we could solve this problem effectively, effectively by the proposed ADM, customized ADM, ADMM, but it's still far away from the real time control, real time guidance, because it, it still cost several seconds or, or more than 10 seconds to solve the problem with the given conditions. So next, we are trying to further improve their computational efficiency by applying two methods. One is learning-based method, second is domain decomposition. First, first for a learning of the control problem, typically for existing work, they are trying to train their uh, deep neutral network by different control and state pairs to train the model using multiple data hard numerical data to train train new network. How you however in our work we are trying to find out the features of the solution to identify or reconstruct the <coughs> optimal solution, optimal control law. In that way we can definitely reduce the computational load and train load and the required to train data data size. For example, for the uh, power descent phase, it has proven the for the, the control law it should be a bang bang control. And here, that means for the we use the necessary condition of Marty, we, we can prove that the control the optimal control for the uh, power descent phase should be a bang bang control with maximum minimal maximal curve. This is magnitude of thrust. So if we know in the the time, the switch time from maximum to minimum and also the minimum to maximum and also the final time, we could exactly reconstruct the optimal control law by doing these correctional parameters. We call these three correctional parameters. Similarly, by studying from the optimal control, optimal control series, we could find out another characteristic parameters or to reconstruct the uh, optimal control law for these two problems. And then we use the input conditions, different input conditions, for, such as the initial velocity and initial position, initial attitude, initial the flight path angle. We set multiple different conditions and the output will be the corresponding correct practical parameters Using the data, so we could train a deep neutral network. And then here is the result. Excuse me. And then we could, all this data, I can mention here, all the data to train the models is obtained by using the ADMA we solvers we obtained it. So that's why we, we use that as a database, then we could train the models. And here's the, the result. By given a random uh, initial conditions, we can rapidly obtain the optimal control solutions. And this method, the, if the, once the DAA model is trended, is well trended, it will be rapidly generated a new optimal control law by given the current state. It, it have a potential to apply it in real-time real guidance. 
And second ambassador is we conceded the atmosphere engine guidance. There, because of the in the engine phase, there were, the attitude changed rapidly from the engine interface to the to near to the ground, and the atmosphere density changed changed largely rapidly. So we are so here we are trying to capture in order to capture local phenomena. Uh, we usually have a high phenomenal degrees is required it when approximating the system constraints, and also we need a large number of nodes in order to discrete the trajectories while preserving the high accuracy. This results in the polynomial programs of inventory large scale and the computational cost is high. This so we then we could uh, we are thinking whether is a way to decouple this problem into several sub problems. So such that that large scale problem will be divided into several small scale problems with low computational cost. That's the idea here. And we used inspired by the total domain decomposition. We divided the engine phase with different phase durations or phase domains with by the attitude. And in each range, we can see in the sub sub problems and we have its own optical control problem by adding the continuity conditions in each bet between the adjacent adjacent domains and that will definitely benefit the conversation for example the must add atmosphere density problem previously we used the sixth order or fourth order polynomial curves and that is Previously, we used the six order polynomials, and then for each sub subdomain, we could need, only need the fourth order polynomial curves for local fittings with higher or improved accuracy. And you, with this method, we could optimize the trajectory with this one, and you use different colors to demonstrate the curve for the different domains. We compared with previous one. It achieved it almost a similar uh, result. And for future work for this one, we will continue to work by combine it, combine it together. We can see the uh, six degree freedom, and also we combine it with the, the real time uh, landing site evaluation and selection into this problem to make it to more close to the uh, real work, to real missions. And also another work for my uh, research, or we also have some research on the design of control for the, the autonomous systems and for UAV systems, and that we develop some uh, algorithms for the motion planning or decision making for autonomous systems and multi-agent system planning and localization problem. Um, that's all for the, my presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. Any questions? All right, thank you, Charlie. We really appreciate it. Um, this is an amazing presentation. You know, this is what we, you know, what we are working towards going towards Mars. So I, I feel like this is very, very uh, important work you're doing. Um, we will be adding this to our technical series. I was just talking to my colleague. This is really great work, what you are doing. All right, thank you so much. I we really appreciate you coming over and taking your time over the Sunday to present with us. So. Thank you. It's also good to be and pleasure to be present here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Awesome.